So my first tip on how to improve your photography is that you don't watch any videos about that contain tips about how to improve your photography. Um, instead, I would probably use that time for something constructive like actually taking photographs. It's okay if you make mistakes. It's, it's, if you try something and you fail, that's fine too. But um, basically, photography should be about self-expression and about self-discovery. If you follow a path that someone else has already paved, it's just going to be a path to mediocrity. So my first tip, and the most important tip, is that you turn off this video right now. Are they gone? Great, now I can get to the real tips. My name is Gregory Simpson. Um, I go by Igor. Uh, I'm a writer. I'm a photographer. I'm a composer, which here in 2016 is sort of the trifecta of valueless professions. Most people, when they see my photography, are left kind of speechless, actually. So there's probably a lot of questions that have never been asked. Um, usually the most asked question is, why did you take a picture of that? Um, and the answer is almost always because nobody else did. And that's kind of the thing that's always driven my photography. I sort of want to photograph those things people haven't photographed. Um, some people look at photography as, as a literal medium, and I look at it as a figurative medium. In other words, the thing that I point the camera at and take a picture of usually isn't a picture of the thing that's in front of the camera. It's a picture of something else. And for a lot of people, photography is literal, and that's fine, but it just it doesn't work that way for me. I think people that are looking for tips in photography are people who view photography as a technical pursuit. And one look at my photographs and you know photography is not a technical pursuit for me. It's, it's really more of an expressive pursuit. In fact, I think if you want to express yourself, photography is probably the easiest way to do it. If you want to be a painter, you've got to learn to paint. If you want to be a sculptor, you've got to learn to sculpt. If you want to be a musician, you've got to learn to play a musical instrument. Even if you want to be a writer, you've got to at least learn grammar and vocabulary. To be a photographer, you just have to push a button. So I, I, I don't really have technical tips. My only real tip for people is that they just try to find themselves somewhere out there and then take a picture of that. When you're out wildcatting for photos in an urban environment, it's very important to pre-prepare to maybe map out likely locations where you're going to find public toilets. Now, a spindly tree or a small shrubbery might be perfect for a landscape photographer, but on the city streets, they're not quite considered appropriate places to relieve yourself. So, now, I'm not a doctor, although I pretended to be one on the internet, but I'm pretty certain that there is a physical connection between bladder distension and a lack of visual acuity. So if you want to improve your photography, just pay a little attention to where the public washrooms are. OK, this next tip is for you youngsters out there. Um, if you take your camera and you turn it around so that the lens faces away from your face and toward whatever it is that you want to photograph, then you actually get a glimpse into your psyche. And when your social media followers get a glimpse into your psyche, then they get to see what interests you and, and what captures your attention. So the result is that you end up taking a, a self-portrait that's even more realistic, even more telling, more compelling than if you'd have just taken a picture of your own face. I call this a soul selfie. Give it a try sometime. Um, I think it's great to enjoy photography, and I think it's fine to be passionate about photography, but it's essential that you have interests and hobbies and addictions that are completely unrelated to photography. I think we all know that photographer whose portfolio is filled mostly with well-lit, beautiful, glossy shots of his own camera gear, 
you don't want to be that photographer. You want to take interesting photos. And to take interesting photos, I think you need to be interested in what you're photographing. Photography is a means to an end. It is not an end unto itself. This last tip is, is actually a technical tip, even though I said I didn't have any technical tips. And um, it involves rangefinder cameras specifically, uh, like the Leica M. And it works sort of like this. I call it wiggle finger focusing. And what happens is when you focus on something with a rangefinder, you align the two images in the viewfinder. And you might think that they're aligned perfectly, but you're not quite sure. So what I'll do is I'll move a finger in front of the rangefinder window so that one of the two images goes away. And then I'll remove my finger from in front of the window so that the image comes back. If there's any side-to-side -side jitter at all, then I know I haven't achieved perfect focus. And it's kind of a lot easier to see jitter than it is to just look at two static images and see if they're perfectly aligned. So when I'll take a photo that needs to be in focus, which is very rarely, I'll just look through it, get close, and then wiggle my finger while I continue to focus further. And once there is no jitter, then I know you're in perfect focus, and I take the picture, and we have something. And the best part of this is it looks really cool on the streets.